Why is China transporting billions of tons of cables out of the desert? Hello and welcome back to the Shin. Dear viewers, Desserts are the result of natural geological transformations that have taken tens of thousands or even millions of years to form. Notably, China is home to 12 deserts, covering more than a quarter of its territory. However, what has astonished the world is how this nation has completely turned the tide using cutting-edge technology. So, what exactly has China been doing in these vast, arid lands? Let's find out together. China stuns the world, completes 825 kilms of railway, builds 219 bridges across the barren desert in just three years. The Taklamakan Desert, one of the largest in China, stretches 1,000 kilometers in length and 400 kilometers in width covering a total area of 330,000 kilomomond kumuos. This vast region accounts for 20% of Xinjiang's territory, nearly 50 times the size of Shanghai, and is only slightly smaller than Germany. Located within the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, Taklamakan is among the most extreme deserts on Earth. Towering sand dunes, reaching up to 300 meters high, are constantly reshaped by powerful winds. When fierce gusts sweep across the landscape, massive walls of sand can be lifted into the sky, sometimes three times their original height. Not only is Taklamakan the largest desert in China, but it also ranks as the world's 10th largest and the second largest shifting sand desert globally, surpassed only by the Rub al Khali in the Arabian Peninsula. Summer temperatures can soar to a blistering 67.2 degrees C while the surface sand in the desert's eastern edge can reach between 70 degrees C and 80 degrees C during the day, creating mesmerizing mirages. In stark contrast, winter temperatures can plummet below twatch 20 degrees, turning the entire region into a frozen wasteland. Once considered a dead land, Taklamakan has undergone an astonishing transformation thanks to the determination and extraordinary efforts of the Chinese government and its people. On September 27, 2021, China officially completed the 825-kilometer-long Hotan Rokyong Railway, a key component of the country's largest desert rail network. To ensure train safety in regions prone to sandstorms, more than 220 elevated bridges were built along the route. Additionally, approximately 50 million cubic meters of grass grids and 13 million saplings were planted on both sides of the railway to combat desertification. Beyond railways, China has also successfully constructed highways traversing the desert. One remarkable example is the Tarim Desert Highway, which cuts through Taklamakan in the Xinjiang Autonomous Region. This is not only the largest expressway ever built on such challenging terrain, but also a groundbreaking achievement in China's transportation engineering. China's cutting-edge technology, constructing 1-200 kilometers of highways and a railway across the Taklamakan Desert. To date, China has successfully built over 1-200 kilometers of highways through the Taklamakan Desert. To prevent sand from engulfing the roads, engineers have created a massive green belt on both sides, utilizing an advanced drip irrigation system that allows vegetation to thrive despite the harsh desert conditions. To maintain this vast infrastructure, the government has deployed a dedicated workforce along the highway. Every four kilometer, a small blue house accommodates two workers who live there for up to two years, monitoring and maintaining the irrigation system. Since 2003, China has planted approximately two million trees annually, constructed dozens of water wells, and expanded the anti-sand barrier to 70 meters in width and 400 kilometers in length along the desert highway. The completion of an 825-kilometer railway across the Sea of Death the Taklamakan Desert, has astonished the world. To execute this ambitious project, the engineering team used two tons of paper to create detailed design blueprints. Historically, Taklamakan was a key stop along the ancient Silk Road, but constructing a railway in this region posed significant challenges due to water scarcity. Underground water sources were located 130 kilometers from the construction site, Additionally, any water poured onto the desert would quickly be absorbed, making the project seem nearly impossible. However, China was determined to complete this project due to the severe sandstorms that plague the region from March to September each year. These storms frequently cancel flights, block roads, and nearly isolate the communities living south of the desert. 
rail transport emerged as the safest and most stable mode of transportation in the area. Engineers devised a solution by compacting the sand to a moisture level of 12% to 16% and using heavy rollers to create a solid foundation. They then laid grid frameworks at 60 centimeters intervals to reinforce the surface, repeating the process multiple times until the ground could withstand pressures of up to 150 kPa, ensuring the safe passage of trains. Yet the challenges didn't stop there. The Taklamakan Desert is one of the world's largest shifting sand deserts, with 65% of the Hotan Ruokiang Railway running through regions heavily affected by wind and sand movement. Sand dunes here shift an average of 20 meters per year, forcing engineers to develop solutions to prevent sand encroachment. They constructed elevated bridges in the windiest areas, allowing trains to pass above without being affected by the shifting sands below. To further enhance safety, five bridges spanning a total length of 49.7 kilometers were built along the railway, ensuring smooth operations even during sandstorms. Additionally, Researchers implemented a network of grass barriers anchored with sand and gravel to minimize desert movement beneath the tracks. The extreme temperature fluctuations of the desert also posed a major challenge for construction and operation. To address this, China deployed unmanned rollers and bulldozers integrated with smart management technology. This system collects data and precisely controls the quality of the railway foundation. The automated machinery follows a programmed sequence to ensure the highest standards of roadbed density and smoothness. The successful completion of the Hotan Ruokiang Railway not only demonstrates China's world-class engineering capabilities, but also improves the lives of local communities, facilitates trade and tourism, and contributes to sustainable economic development in the region. Transforming a Desert Twice the size of Shanghai into a thriving oasis this is the remarkable story of Kubuki, China's seventh-largest desert. Once an unforgiving landscape where even birds hesitated to fly for fear of getting lost in an endless sea of sand, Kubuki covers an area of 13,900 kilomengxi, twice the size of Shanghai. Towering sand dunes, some as high as 60 meters, equivalent to a 20-story building, constantly shifted with the wind, making the region nearly uninhabitable. According to local residents, during the 1950s and 1960s, sandstorms raged for up to 300 days a year, engulfing everything in their path. For generations, people here endured daily struggles. Meals were filled with sand, and each morning, their blankets were covered in a fine dust. The lack of infrastructure made medical treatment almost impossible, and even building a house took up to three years, as materials had to be transported by horse and camel. Imagine colossal dunes relentlessly moving forward, burying everything in their way. Throughout Chinese history, many communities were forced to abandon their homes as the desert expanded. Yet, remarkably, 3,000 years ago, this area was once fertile land. It wasn't until about 400 years ago that desertification took hold, driven by relentless sandstorms. Many believe that sandstorms originate from deserts, but the reality is more complex. The blinding yellow dust that fills the air during sandstorms often comes from dried-up salt lakes and degraded land rather than from the desert itself. In these barren regions, the soil hardens and becomes fragile, allowing fine dust particles to be easily swept away by strong winds. Once the fertile topsoil is carried off, all that remains is lifeless sand, and thus, deserts are formed as the final stage of land degradation. In the past, Reclaiming desert landscapes seemed impossible due to technological limitations. A striking example is Minkin County, which lies between the Badanjaran and Tengger deserts. This region was once home to Qingtu Lake, a vast body of water comparable in size to Qinghai Lake. Over time, however, its surface area shrank dramatically, from 400 km during the Ming and Qing dynasties to just 70 km in the 1940s, before completely drying up by the late 1950s. By the 1970s, Qingtu had disappeared from maps entirely. With the lake gone, a 13-kilometer-long sand belt formed, becoming a gateway for desertification to engulf Minkin County. So how did people fight back against this sand monster? 
scientists embarked on an ambitious ecological restoration project, including redirecting water from the Yellow River into the Qingtu area. This effort resulted in the creation of a 106 km2 wetland, which significantly improved the environment and prevented the merger of two massive deserts. A similar approach was taken in Kubuki, where desert reclamation efforts began in the 1960s and 1970s. A 250 km long canal was constructed to divert water from the Yellow River, supplying irrigation to this arid expanse. While the concept seemed straightforward, the reality of implementation was daunting. The shifting sand dunes not only obstructed construction, but also swallowed any structure that wasn't meticulously planned. However, persistence prevailed. Engineers built a 100 km long highway through the desert, stabilizing the sand dunes while facilitating the transport of materials and seedlings. This marked a turning point in the greening of Kubuki. By 2022, the average height of Kubuki's sand dunes had been reduced by half compared to two decades earlier, an astonishing achievement in humanity's ongoing battle against harsh natural conditions. More than 6,000 kilometers of desert has been reclaimed, with over 3,200 km to Kumu successfully reforested. This means that 33.3% of Kubuki's vast expanse has gradually been brought back to life. Even more impressively, thanks to advancements in technology, the pace of desert reclamation has accelerated. In 2002, forest cover in the region was a mere 0.8%, but by 2021, it had surged to 15.7%. Vegetation coverage also skyrocketed from 16.2% to 53%, exceeding half of the desert's total area. Although the Kubuki Restoration Project has yet to reach the milestone of completely eliminating the desert, like the case of the Mu Us Desert, it is on track to become the second desert to vanish from China's maps. Today, Kubuki has transformed into one of Inner Mongolia's key agricultural hubs. As the environment rebounds, so too does the region's biodiversity, with the number of species increasing tenfold. Once vanished flora and fauna, such as swans, hares, and poplar trees, have made a triumphant return. Taking advantage of the desert's unique conditions, locals have developed a vast clean medicinal herb industry with 2.2 million MU, approximately 1,167 kilometers, dedicated to licorice cultivation ensuring chemical-free, pollution-free farming. Additionally, newly formed wetlands have been harnessed for aquaculture, including large-scale crab farming. One of the most remarkable developments is the emergence of black soil across more than 1 million MU, approximately 667 kolomisiesus, of desert, which has helped retain 24 billion and three of water and release 18.3 million tons of oxygen into the atmosphere. These extraordinary achievements have brought about tangible environmental changes. The number of annual sandstorm days has plummeted from 50 to 60 to just 3 out of 5, while average annual rainfall has risen from less than 70 mm to over 300 mm. Since the late 1980s, local authorities have ramped up environmental restoration efforts, culminating in 1996 with the launch of a 1.28 billion RMB approximately $180 million for this project to build a 340-kilometer-long desert highway, an infrastructure breakthrough in Kubuki's transformation. In 2006, further steps were taken to relocate nomadic populations from the desert and invest in village infrastructure, stabilizing livelihoods. Previously, children in the region rarely attended school before the age of 10, but thanks to an investment of 110 million RMB, $15.5 million in education, New schools from kindergarten to high school have been established, now serving over 1,300 students and teachers. In summary, the Kabuki Restoration Project has surpassed expectations. The once relentless migrating sand dunes have been halted by a 240-kilometer-long sand barrier system at the heart of the desert. This initiative has not only lifted over 100,000 local residents out of poverty, but has also created more than 1 million jobs. Kabuki is no longer the desolate wasteland it once was. Once deemed uninhabitable even by birds, it has now become a global model for desert reclamation and ecological restoration. China invents a giant net to prevent desertification as 2 million kilometers of land faces the threat of being swallowed by sand. 
Every year, as spring arrives in the Ulaanbu Desert in China's Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region, powerful sandstorms begin to rage. Strong winds blow clouds of sand and dust daily, covering trees, houses, and even infiltrating every corner of homes, turning everything from dining tables to beds into a free layer of sand. This is an unwanted specialty of the region. This land was once lush and ideal for growing licorice. However, in just 10 to 20 years, shifting sand dunes have silently advanced by 500 meters, swallowing everything in their path like an unstoppable desert monster. What's even more concerning is that Ulaanbu sits at the upper reaches of the Yellow River, often referred to as China's Mother River. When strong northwestern winds blow, desert sand is carried into the river, causing severe sedimentation. This not only disrupts water flow and threatens nearby agricultural areas, but also raises the river's water level, increasing the risk of flooding. Imagine a heavy rainfall combining with a sediment-choked riverbed. Such a scenario could trigger a natural disaster at any moment. And this isn't just Ulaanbu's problem. Across China, more than 2 million kilometers of land has succumbed to desertification, a staggering and alarming figure. To combat this silent invasion, China has had to take bold measures leading to the development of innovative solutions. One of the most groundbreaking technologies is the polylactic acid, PLA, sand barrier, a revolutionary invention. Imagine a giant net woven tightly across the sand's surface. These PLA fibers not only anchor firmly into the sand, but are also biodegradable, similar to dissolvable surgical sutures in medicine. More importantly, they are completely eco-friendly, free of harmful chemicals, and non-polluting. When deployed on a large scale, PLA barriers help hold the sand in place, preventing it from being carried away by the wind while creating a solid foundation for vegetation to take root. With just a little water and seeds, barren land can gradually come back to life. But China hasn't stopped there. The country has launched large-scale desert greening projects using cutting-edge technology. In the Taklamakan Desert, once dubbed the Sea of Death, vast solar and wind farms are now emerging. The intense sunlight, once an enemy of life, has been harnessed into an invaluable resource, providing renewable energy to the Xinjiang region. For example, a solar power plant in Lop County boasts a capacity of 200 milliwatts, generating approximately 360 million kilowatts of electricity annually. This is equivalent to saving 110,000 tons of coal and reducing CO2 emissions by 330,000 tons. Integrated energy storage systems ensure a stable power supply, even on rainy days. What's remarkable is that these solar panels do more than just generate electricity, they act as giant umbrellas, shading the ground below. The shade helps lower soil temperatures, reduce water evaporation, and create favorable conditions for vegetation to grow. Some companies even utilize the space beneath the panels for farming or livestock grazing, transforming energy projects into sustainable agricultural models. The pinnacle of China's desert greening ambition is the Great Solar Wall Project a massive infrastructure initiative being constructed along the Kubuki Desert. Stretching 133 kilometers in length and 25 kilometers in width, China aims to generate 180 billion kilowatts of electricity annually from this project by 2030, enough to power millions of households. From small sand-retaining nets to colossal renewable energy projects, China is turning barren wastelands into thriving landscapes, not only protecting the environment, but also creating valuable resources. This is one of the most remarkable examples of how human ingenuity and determination can triumph over nature. Thank you for staying with the Shin until the very last moments of today's video. If you have any thoughts or suggestions, don't hesitate to share them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. We truly appreciate all of your contributions. For now, goodbye, and see you in our next exciting videos. Take care.